All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're gonna be in the 147 pound division where, oh man, people got some decisions to make, decisions to make, decisions to make, and an offer had been made to Jerron Ennis that he probably should consider taking if at all possible. Let's talk about how uh, how Jerron Ennis will be affected by and other unsigned people unsigned to the PBC will be affected by Showtime's closure and how Jerron Ennis himself should probably take Floyd Mayweather Jr. up on his offer at his earliest convenience. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're gonna be in the 147 pound division where one of the best fighters that there is in the world uh, is going to be a very, very highly coveted free agent, and that is Jerron Boots Ennis. And this is a time where statements that had been made by Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Iller, Leonard Ellerby about Jerron Ennis really come into play. Before I get into that, though, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And if you are a longtime subscriber and supporter of the channel, thank you so much for your continued support. It means a lot to the channel. But let's get into this because, as we know, Showtime Boxing has closed its doors. If you've not heard that yet, let me tell you, Showtime Boxing is it's no longer rumors. It is not actually. And I can go into that a little bit because all these people I told you. So I told you to uh, told you so said a whole lot of things that did not come out, didn't come to be. But if I stick my head out the window and I said I, it's going to rain today and it doesn't rain. And then I stick my head out the day, the next out the door the next day. And I say it's going to rain today and it doesn't rain. And then the 15th time that I say, oh, it's going to rain today, it rains. I can't run around coming to you. Oh, I told you so. I know everything. Man, police. Whatever, though. <laughs> Showtime Boxing has announced that it is no longer going to be putting out boxing content. So what happens with the fighters? Obviously, a lot of the fighters are with the PBC. So wherever the PBC goes, so will they, because they are in advisory or managerial contracts with with Al Heyman and the PBC. You also have other promoters that that typically do business with him, like uh, Samson Leskovich, Tom Brown, uh uh, and various other promoters. Those are the big ones that I can really that I really thinking of that I can think of off the top of my head whose fighters are consistently doing uh, doing business with the PBC and Al Heyman and putting them on a showtime. They're more than likely all going to go to the new network that that show that PBC has already procured. And my understanding is that it's already procured. The Al Heyman handled the transition and Steven Espinosa handled the transition from HB uh, from Showtime to their next whoever they're going to be on after that ahead of time. So those guys are going to go over there. However, there is one guy, Jerron Ennis, that is the that is a bit of an anomaly because he was the only fighter that I know of that had a deal, had an unofficial deal directly with Showtime itself. So what happens to him? And I'm going to tell you now, he's in a situation, a very rare situation, a situation that I think is similar to somebody coming out of the Olympics. Now, I know that he has a promoter in Cameron Duncan. However, if he is going to go fight on a particular network, he is going to have to they're going to have to bond with a or partner with one of those big promoters that either either the typical way that Bob Arum likes to do with it, which is a co-promotional deal or uh, or, or Matchroom, who likes to do co-promotional deals or go and have a relationship with Al Heyman where you can be you can still be your own entity 
and and be underneath a promoter of name like a Tom Brown or a Samson Leskovich or somebody like that to allow you to continue to take, you know, to be on the network and to be on their cards and to be featured, you know, to be featured on their cards. So Jerron Ennis is in that type of situation where he probably can go wherever he wants to go because of the skill level that he's already proven, the fan base, his growing fan base that he has, despite what uh, other people want to say about nobody knowing him and this and that. No, man, everybody in the boxing world knows perfectly well who Jerron Ennis is. Jerron Ennis was not an Olympian, you know, because he had gotten beat by uh, Gary Antoine Russell. So, uh, you know, so people, he didn't get the like the Olympic exposure and all of that. However, as a fighter that is 26 years old, that has been in the top two or top three of every major champion, uh, major sanction, sanction and body uh, in the welterweight division, somebody that has had spectacular showings on Showtime on multiple occasions. This man is going to be a very, very wanted pro- uh, um, product. So what should he do, though? Now, this is my personal opinion. I think that he should find a way through co- a co-promotional deal or otherwise to take up Leonard Ellerby and Floyd Mayweather Jr. on their uh, on their offer because they said, man, if he ever became free, we would love to sign him because we can make a huge star of him. Now, People can say what they want to say about Floyd Mayweather, but Floyd Mayweather Jr. made himself a megastar. And he also did a extremely good job with Gervonta Davis, to say the least. So the idea that he could not do the same thing for a product like Jerron Ennis, I highly doubt. I highly doubt there's anybody more qualified and more and with and with a more interest in doing so. The problem with the other promoters for Jerron Ennis is Jerron Ennis doesn't fit the bill. <laughs> right. Uh, ter- uh, let's take example. Let's go through Oscar De La Hoya. He doesn't fit the bill for Oscar De La Hoya to make some big star. And you got Oscar De La Hoya going through lawsuits with everybody that come with with Canelo and with uh, Ryan Garcia. But his take is his focus has always been more on on uh, Mexican fighters. You have take uh, um, Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn maybe can come up with a lot of money, but. Eddie Hearn hasn't merely grown anybody into that scenario in the United States. Bob Arum. Bob Arum is somebody that is famous for making fighters who get you a lot of championship belts and you'll make a good amount of money up to a point. But then eventually you're going to have to break from him and go to somebody like the PBC in order to get in order to grow like you can grow. Like you should be able to grow if you're that talent level, that level of fighter. So we'll see what we'll see. Uh, what uh, what he does. My personal belief is that, you know, you stick, you kind of, you try to stick with what is working for you and for Jerron Ennis, that is working for you. However, the, the relationship with the PBC, even though it's indirect, is working for you, you know? And I'm sure Cameron Duncan, as his promoter, manager, even though I don't really see the the real relationship with him and Cameron Duncan, um, I don't see it. That doesn't mean it's not there. I, I just don't see it. Still, that uh, very, very much could work together with the PBC. And I'm hoping to see that that's where he is. Most of those belts are going to wind up being with PBC fighters at 147 pounds, at 154 pounds. And I would think that you would go with the people that can really kind of blow you up. And also for the people who say, well, Showtime's gone. Showtime, this is not the first network that, that the PBC has gone from. And also, please remember, the top rank was not always with ESPN. And Golden Boy was not always with DAZN. Golden Boy used to be with HBO. Golden Boy, uh, uh, Golden Boy used to be with ESPN. E, uh, Top Rank used to be with HBO. So don't tell me that you're right. And before, and originally before there was an HBO, Top Rank was with ABC, right? Or they were putting on their own pri- uh, closed circuit uh, fights and then airing their fights on ABC and Wide World of Sports and things like that. Um, 
uh, early in the days of, uh, in the night, early 1970s or early in the days of their establishment. So all these things change. I don't really think that this is something that is going to be earth shattering to the world of boxing or the fighters in the PBC, but I do think it'll affect it in certain ways. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. You please let me know what you think in the comment section. Try to be respectful, man, because if you're not, I'm just going to delete your comment. Just letting you know. If you, you go back to your comment, like where to go, it's because I read it and I was like, look, man, I'm sorry. You're not going to I'm not your dog. You're not going to kick me. <laughs> so I probably won't block you, but I will definitely if I read it, I'll get rid of it, man, because we don't need a toxic environment. So please don't bring it. Anyway, that's my take on the matter. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Deuces.